So Eric, we've taken some questions from some viewers that have been willing to leave them on our community tab for YouTube. We have so many here and apologies to those we don't get to. One of which is from Melissa Rose and Melissa writes, is there one thing you feel is essential for a screenwriter slash writer to know before beginning, before starting? Um, well, there are a lot of things, but I mean, I think that the reason I wrote this book about, you know, making the idea process a priority is really based on my feeling that you need to know that choosing the idea that you're going to write is so important and so essential and not easy to pick an idea that's going to be a worthwhile thing to write. Worthwhile meaning it would have a chance at you know, moving you forward in the industry. It, it's always worthwhile to write and have the experience perhaps for yourself and your own learning and growth. But from a, from a commercially marketable, can move my career forward standpoint, to me, the, probably the most important thing, which is why the, I, you know, I wrote this book about this, is, is to understand what the elements are of a, of a viable story idea and to make coming up with one your main priority and take the time and get the feedback necessary on your just ideas before you launch into six months or a year or even several years writing and rewriting a script because you can write and rewrite a script endless times but to make it somewhat better but if it's based on an idea that really it was always going to have a tough time moving forward no matter how you execute it a manager or an agent would call that somewhat wasted time so that's probably my first obvious self-serving answer based on my book being about that. <laughs> well, it makes sense. Maybe we can go back to actually some more of the words in this um, problem acronym. So original, you know, we, we hear so much of that. It's got to really have this writer's voice and all that and, and, and got to be this fresh sort of, but hasn't so much already been done? It seems like it'd be yeah. very challenging today to have something quote unquote original. It is tough, I think, to be really original. Um, and, you know, it goes back to your question about writing things that are really personal to you. You know, sometimes the most original things do come from taking your real life or taking something you witnessed or experienced and using that as fodder for material. So there, there is, there can be a value for that if you can also do what I talked about, which is find a way to have perspective on it so you can make it viable, entertaining, compelling to, you know, millions of people that don't know you. It's not an easy thing to do. But, you know, originality is, it's a tricky one um, because you can only be so original because, you know, so many things have already been done, right? So many types of stories and genres and types of story situations. I mean, I just saw Eighth Grade last night. Yeah. Which, you know, was a very original voice. Uh -huh. Um, but it's about something that we've seen four million examples of, which is a kind of misfit teen who the popular people are mean to, trying to find their way in the social universe of school. Like, is there anything that's been done more often than that? <laughs> but yet, you watch the movie, and it, because it felt authentic and real and specific and vivid and done not in exactly the way we've seen it before, and it had some currency because there was a whole social media aspect to it where she has like a vlog and she's on Instagram all the time you know it feels like it's very much about that problem for today's eighth graders in a certain setting so you update it you make it current you make it specific I think that's the thing it's not that it has to be an idea that is so out there and different and special because sometimes that can be a trap if you try to be too original sometimes you end up writing things that are contrived or hard to believe or hard to understand because your focus is on it has to be different from everything else. When a writer focuses too much on originality, I, I wrote in this book, sometimes they're doing it at the expense of these other important elements of what makes a viable story idea. Like it may not be as compelling or as entertaining or as relatable or these other things because they're mainly focused on, yeah, but no one's ever seen it before. Doesn't matter though if no one's ever seen it before if it doesn't grab the audience or the reader in the ways that great stories always have. So you always have to balance the need for originality with those other elements. Um, that being said, you're right that an original voice is highly valued in a new writer. But it's like finding a way to have that original, I think authentic's a better word, that authenticity where things feel so real so believable but so like well observed and unique and we haven't seen it quite this way before because something in this writer's way of seeing the world and people came up with this version of it that is very memorable even if it's within the context of something that is somewhat familiar you know like a sh like if you look at napoleon dynamite in its day kind of the same thing very original voice 
but it's about an awkward teen who doesn't fit in and people, you know, push him into lockers, you know, kind of thing. But when you watch it, you're mainly focused on the authenticity, the originality of it, not noticing that this is a story form or a genre or a type of story problem that we've seen endless variations on before. So it's kind of like you're taking something that's been done in terms of a genre usually, but you're putting a very fresh, unique, current, specific spin on it. Right, I'm thinking of Pretty in Pink. Yeah. So, so that first sort of, you know, our generation, that was sort of the, the Misfits movie, especially female character. And just, uh, would, would that still work today? But yeah, you add in the vlogging element. And I haven't seen Eighth Grade, that's on my list. Um, but uh, something where, you know, she's in this sort of town and she sees like the sort of the, the Soch, and I know Soch isn't really used these days, but, um, and sort of that looking up and looking to aspire. You know, and so I think anybody can relate to that. That's that's a universal thing. But yeah, you throw in the vlogging element, the social media. Um, but yeah, the sort of the high school party that everybody cringes at, you go to and 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 hope to be noticed. But you know, they don't really see you, and you sort of blend into the background type of a thing. Um, do you feel that it's still possible though to do that story over and over again? I know you said you've you've added in these, or they they've added in these new things. The the social media and, and the things that are current today, but that that story is very universal, whether it's male or female. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I think it is possible, and Bo Burnham proves it with that example, that you can do this thing we've seen so many times. You can instantly call up other movies that have that same component. I mean, it has that high school party that the character walks in and is petrified and <laughs> doesn't get noticed or gets noticed in a negative way. It has that very scene, but it has a unique version of that scene we've never seen before that feels real and feels very well observed and is very entertaining and emotional to watch. So to me, that's the key thing. Don't try and reinvent the wheel in terms of genre or types of story problems, but bring something fresh, specific, real, and original to your treatment of that, of that sort of genre element that we know is universally relatable because that's one of the really hard things is to make sure that what you're putting out there is going to be relatable to millions of people and the kinds of story situations that are going to be have probably been explored many times before because there aren't an infinite variety of them. There are certain core elements that you tend to see repeated over and over again in successful stories. That's why I love Blake Snyder's 10 genres in Save the Cat. It's my favorite thing about that book. And I always work with those 10 genres when I work with writers writing screenplays because I think he really pinpointed like the kinds of human situations that we've seen work over and over again in successful movies. And there are variations on each, but there are certain key core elements that are present and to sort of realize which one you're going for and then to really try and fulfill its elements, I think is a really helpful tool for writers coming up with ideas for films. Well, so the last letter in your acronym uh, for problem is meaningful. So taking, let's say, eighth grade or Napoleon Dynamite or Pretty in Pink or whatever in that sort of that high school, you know, not fitting in genre, what would be, what, what's the meaning that a movie like that could give? Because you could just see it as well. It's just, you know, hey, everybody had it tough in high school. It doesn't matter if you were popular. It doesn't matter if you were bullied. Everybody had it tough in some degree. So wh where's the meaning in that? So I think if you walk away going, well, everyone had tough in high school, what's the big deal? That means that movie didn't affect you very much and it probably wasn't meaningful to you, right? So meaningful to me is when we talk about like theme and what's a movie really about underneath its, its surface plot. What's the message or what's the underlying issue being explored or issues? And also what the audience takes home with them. Do they feel impacted by it? Do they feel it had some meaning to their own lives? As opposed to, I just watch these people have this thing happen and I sort of forget about it the next moment. Or it doesn't really, nothing that I saw feels like it impacts me and my view of the world and people at all. It's just a fictional story and when it's over, it's very forgettable. So meaningful in some ways is the most optional of these seven elements that I put in the book because certain movies, like let's say Transformers or something, don't necessarily to be, need to be so meaningful and have such a strong theme like that. And I'm not dissing Transformers or saying that it doesn't have any theme or meaning, but certain kinds of movies, if they're so entertaining and they have such a punishing problem that is relatable enough to a universal audience, which when you have life or death stakes, you usually have that one covered. You know, life altering stakes, 
what's the other one? Original and believable, if it's executed in ways that, that do all those things, you, you could have a hit movie on your hands, even if it isn't that meaningful. But what most writers trying to break in are trying to do are movies that do have a lot of meaning, because that's often what writers are most attracted to is the theme and the character arc and that kind of stuff that tends to give something meaning. I also think we talked about the originality and the whole executing something in a brand new way that feels very specific and well-observed and real. That helps give it meaning to people because if they feel like they're just watching this contrived thing that was just there to entertain them, but it, nothing about it felt real or felt like, oh, in my life and my kids or my memory of childhood, I, can, I went through that or it like touches me, then it's not going to be meaningful to them. So... Meaningful is maybe the most optional and the final one of the seven to consider, but it can be the most important one in the end that like puts you over the top. Because if your script makes people really feel something and, and almost makes them think about their own lives in some way, even a, you know, a hardened professional reader in the industry, if it really makes them feel like I didn't just watch these remote people, but I connected, and it feels like it explored something about the human condition that's relevant to me and to everyone, that's really powerful.